back in sunny Harborn this morning, hopefully for the uh, the last instalment with regards to the kitchen. Uh, I'll spin you around in a minute. Everything's been delivered, and I'll tell you what we're going to do first. So three new tour units. One, two, alcove three, and then a full height wall cupboard to go in there rather than a small one from that rubbish design before where it stepped down because of the roof. It should never have happened. Right then, there's a little person just out camera shot. I'll lift this up a minute. There we are. Um, so I'll get on with it. I'll set myself up out here. Look, it's sunny because I've got no room in here now. It's all a bit cramped. Looks like they've been doing a bit of painting in the little side bit, other side of that wall. So I'll get myself set up, get these unboxed. Start fitting some cupboards. First job done. That one's on. That was all right. It's a good start. Everything was as it should be. Um, things I don't like about rent cupboards, I've got to say. Top's level. Bottom's level. Level that way across the top, that way. Put it on the front, not level. What's all that about? And then level that, level the side. It's like a parallelogram. That's a problem. Those cupboards. Same as the base units, same as all units, with a thin back like that, stapled on. The problem is, they don't square them corner to corner when they make them. That's the problem. So you can be level that way and this way, but this way, you're not. What's all that about? Struggle with these. I had to cramp them, in, lever them in the end and cramp them to pull them out of parallelogram. That's the downside with this type of kitchen. Quickly manufactured, chuck them out the door. No. Um, opinions on rent kitchens? Whether I think you should buy one, in my opinion, as a fitter that doesn't do them all the time. Uh, I don't do kitchens all the time, that is. Every four months or something when we do a new job. But you expect there's a premium that would have been paid for this kitchen. I don't know how much, but there would have been shouldn't expect certain things not to be right. Like this lot. Who pays the installer to come back? You could argue they haven't been paid for the job yet, but if I was waiting to be paid, I had to wait three weeks for this to turn up, but I've got to wait three weeks, three weeks for my wages. It ain't fair, is it, really? Just because of someone's cock up, because I can't measure right. But anyway, let's stop the doom and gloom. The sun is trying to shine. And I've got these to fit, ready for templating tomorrow. Let's get positive. So I've cracked on, got a panel cut to height. I've put a bracket at the top there, which I'll show you in a minute. This is the front, this is the top. And what I've done again is I have made sure I've left the manufactured edge at the bottom, which is always best to do, which I've explained why before. Um, so all we'll do now is the bracket will fix there next to that one because the line you can see there after all my marking out and remarking and making sure it was all checking that second one there 
the panels go into the face bits there. So I'm going to put a bracket there just to hold the top because there's a scribe going in here. And then obviously it'll be fixed to the cupboard anyway. And then the cupboard will be fixed to the um, the patris I've put in the wall there, which you already know. Uh, and I've just prepped myself in here. Done my pilot holes there, three in the bottom. And then I can already explain it, but you can go through the hinge on these ones through there. So I've got that all set. This has all been levelled and checked. That bit of a wedge there just picks me off the floor just a touch. Um, so I'm not right on top of the floor anyway. Uh, and then I've made sure I put myself a level line, which is that one there, to um, make sure I'm level across the top here when this panel goes on. Because if it goes in level that way, then it's level that way because it's been cut square. So we'll put that in place. And then we'll, I've got to move this down a touch because if, then if I explain to you about these tall cupboards are 50 mil smaller in finished height than what I'm used to. And this is what I said about sometimes experience. Bites you in the arse a little bit. And that's one of them. So all I'll do is, luckily if you remember from the footage, I, I took a chunk out the patris we put in the walls and there's about 50, 60 mil below it anyway, just in case. Good job I did really. Um, so all I'll do with that is I'll cut the plasterboard out, drop that ducting down because there's, there's a little bit of movement in the ducting. Um, I know if you remember again from other footage, we did it. Uh, we didn't do it taut, but we didn't do it sat. We didn't do it with loads of slack on it. So I could pull that down a touch. Plasterboard that I take out the bottom. I'll then fix at the top on a bit of um, a bit of lath into the wall, and then we'll fill that. Do I get the panel on and start getting this tall wall covered in? Tall um, oven housing in. Right. Masses on, so it doesn't matter because I'm rubbish at it anyway. So now I'm making Adam here today to uh, answer the questions and I can pretend I know what I'm talking about. So I can turn it off. Um, so that panel's in place, it's all fixed, all down there. I made sure it's level across the top that this can be faffing. Make sure it's level down here, make sure it's level this way, and then I fixed a bracket at the top there at the back um, as well. So that's that's solid as it stands. That's nice and parallel all the way down there, which is good. So I know I'll just move that down a touch here and then put the first tall housing in here. And we are now, and Jen's behind me, we'll be pleased to know, we're ready for templating now. Because that's there. Now that's there, that can template now, so that's fine. Um, it's just getting that in there to make sure they can level more measure this way. So at least we, uh, we're ready anyway. So I'll crack on now and get these cupboards in here after I've had a, a quick bite to eat. And then um, we carry on. I'll move this lot. And then we can get the cupboard in there as well. And then we'll start looking at finishing off the cornice and palmets and the scribes. Scribe over there, scribe in there. There's going to be a scribe down there as well if this one goes tight to this unit. So we'll have a look at that as well. Give this gloat, it doesn't happen very often, but I've set the legs and uh, yeah, I've had to turn the back one and that's it. And it's all level, level across that way, back and front, level that way, level this way. Oh, it's all lovely, even powered out the front with me square, all the way up. About that, it doesn't do that very often. Let's get it screwed in, then stop gloating.
Okay, we have an unexpected uh, twist to put in this last cupboard in. Just serves me right, doesn't it? They all went in perfect. No, no trouble at all. And now I'm going to have to mess for a while with this now because of the weight of it. So I've just took the, these uh, shelves out. So just clip onto there. Um, and now I'm going to have to look at maybe taking that mechanism off there and that mechanism off there just so I can take the doors off to then make it a little bit simpler to move with less risk of damage to the doors because that's my ultimate worry is damaging the doors when I'm trying to lift and shift and carry it into there. So I'll have a look at that. I shan't record it in case I'm effing and jeffing, but uh, we'll see if it's all gone well, if it's fitted in there. If it hasn't gone well, it'd be in there, wouldn't it, in pieces. Right then, let's crack on with this. In case you're wondering what I'm doing, I'll tell you. Uh, first of all, what a pig. I've had to cut the back legs off that. I'll cut them down, should I say, by 20 mil, because if you remember, if I might be able to show it, actually. Under there, show the existing floor. So the back legs have had to be cut down 20 mil to get them in. Um, and I'm about four mil higher on my new concrete than the old concrete. So, uh, uh, than the, the, on the new concrete to the new screed, sorry. Um, it isn't too bad, it isn't too bad. So what I'm doing now, I'm levelling it in, but all I've done is I've put some temporary packers on there. What I want to do is level it all in and then get it set width-wise with just a panel off here. At the minute, you can see it's got to come over. So that's what I wanted to do. I didn't want to level it, especially when these tall covers can sort of do this, be level at the top, but go in like that. So I know that this is level. This is our new wall. So I know that when this is against there on the packers, top, middle and bottom, it's level this way. And then I'll level it in this way. Back, I'm going to struggle to get to the back, but what I'll, rather than level it that way, I'll just stick it on the front, which is the most important anyway. Um, and it should, by rights, if it's level that way and level on the front, it should therefore level that way as well, shouldn't it? But I've already talked about that, haven't I? I mean, look at that. See that? I see it come. Rubbish. These are all hanging out, it's all these screws. So as if they've tried the best, but ne they never can never achieve it. Never achieve it. Got top quality. I mean, that's just. I've already talked about this one. If you remember, when I put that one on, I had to repair all the uh, all the hinge holes. It looked like someone put it on, then dragged it off, um, dragged it back out again, and ripped all the fixings out. I just had to glue it and fix it all. Oh yeah. Anyway, just a, a catalogue of things that make me not want to fit another one again, and I won't. Not on red anyway. <laughs> I'm sure you can agree it was a bit too tight for me to start showing you exactly what I was doing then, but um, this is what I have done. So I fixed this into the timber the stud, which I know is there. I had a quick look back at my footage and identified that the timber, which I thought I knew anyway, is in the middle of this depth. So it was about 305 mil from the back. So I've then, I know it's too 
far in the brickwork and the timber to get to f screw through this because there's a 22 mil, 25 mil gap there before the plasterboard, then plasterboard, then so it's a bit too big. And then I've got dabbed as well, if you remember. Um, so all I did was fix this on first and then identified my timber and fixed the timber across the back into the underside of it, into the timber with some inch and a half eights and then put a bracket on, prefix bracket, and then fix the bracket into the timber then. So that's all I did there, just to identify that. And that is going nowhere. Um, what I did do is I set this cupboard slightly back off bubble because the weight of it, when you pull it out, what I don't want is it, is it sort of pulling itself shut again. Um, uh, sorry, falling forward, sorry, with the weight. So I set it back a little bit. So the worst that can happen is it falls in and doesn't come crashing out this way with the weight. So I always set mine back a little bit, just to turn the bubble out of plumb backwards when you've got these big things in them. I've always done that and it's never caused me any issues and I think that makes sense to me. Um, it hasn't caused any issues there. And there might be a tiny little smidge there, but to be honest, when you're looking from this perspective, you're going to have to go right against the door and look that way to see any kind of difference in that gap and that gap down the bottom, which there is a little bit that I can see, but I know it's there. But from here, looking from here, you're not going to see it. It's in this though as well, something else. Big sticker. Yeah, won't come off without scraping or sponge or something, scrubbing at it. Another, another pain in the arse, not thought about. Right then, so I'm going to get this done, get this all finished today then. So this will all be done. So tomorrow, chop saw comes out then. I get the doors, get this all this mechanism back in. Um, and then tomorrow, it's going to be um, permits. Um, yeah. Cornices, sort of say. Cornice, top one. Yeah, cornice. Uh, and then scribes. And then handles. And then I'm done. But how much I'll be able to do tomorrow, I don't know. It's dependent now on when the guys come to do the templating, which is, um, if you've not seen it before, I'd ask them if I can film it, because it's quite interesting. They get um, like a laser and it maps it out. They just go around with like almost like a laser, like a dip, and just press the button, press the button, press the button, just keep going around and it maps the maps it all out. Not like the old fashioned, like my guy used to do. Um, he used to get some hard board and tape it all together and measure it all, and that's how he used to do it. But And it used to work out great every time, so how we've moved on. If I can film that, then I will. I might uh, see if I can ask it, because it's quite interesting. this interests you you scribe that's what these are uh if you're scribing for um these panels decor panels inside the um between the wall and the cupboard so first step get a piece of stock um oh, i'm going all american now and i piece of stock it's all that about piece of your panel um so you measure from your wall to your i normally measure from the wall to the cupboard there and then I cut a piece, thickness blade, smaller, like that. Then what you do is you get a piece of the um, cabinet stock, whatever that is. Same stock again. This is 19 mil, so I've got a piece of MDF. And you run it along the wall then, all the way down there. And then it, once you've then cut that out, it then insets it between the cupboard and that. I mean, that's because that's a, a wall that we've done. It doesn't need scribing, but I just thought it is a little bit easier rather than trying to measure it and hold it because I can't see because I'm trying to sort of stretch over there. It's more difficult to see. When I do that one, it's a little bit easier, isn't it? So, um, yeah, that's what you do. And then you just get a piece, run it down the wall then like that, or get the... Um, I'll probably use my um, Easy Scribe Trend Jig. I'll use that as well, in case, just in case you haven't got a piece of that, this knocking around. Um, but then all I've got to do then is I've got to minus off the thickness of this because I'm going to put that down the side of the cupboard first to, to simulate that same thing there where the that comes to the face and then the door sits in that gap there. And then what will happen then is my scribe will then sit 
like that against the wall. That's what I'm trying to mimic. So I shall cut that out now, scribe that down there, cut that out, take it on my uh, little table saw outside, and then we'll see how that fits, shall we? see it very well because the light's not great in here but um but yeah i've just put that on there i've just set that one back a little bit so it's behind the pencil round if you like so it doesn't look too much of a dark line um but yeah that one's done put the door in there crack on with that one now because the template man's coming soon so i need to move on a little bit so i can get out of his way so it's not stopping me when he comes because ultimately i'll have to clear the kitchen out i can't work in here then um, but I've got the toilet to do, so that's fine. So I'll get that one done now, and I can start putting this back on and putting this round, putting the cornice on. Right then. So, without getting the gentleman's facing, what he's doing now is he's got this fancy machine, which I'll try and get a sneaky preview of in a minute. Um, and what he does, it maps out the layout of the quartz rather than getting hardboard templates like we used to years ago. Um, probably a long time ago now, wasn't it? I bet since we did that. Um, and then it just marks out um, the lengths and, and positions of the, the gables on the cupboards. And, and it, all it does, he puts these little things on the, on the worktop there. And, uh, and yeah, that just maps it all out. And this is the machine there. And as he spins it round and hits the red dots like a normal measuring laser, like he's doing there now. And it just maps it on there. Sorry, I might get in your way. I like to think how much a piece of kit like that is, but there we go. Fifteen grand. Emily? Fifteen. Fifteen thousand pounds for that, okay. But then the price of hardboard nowadays is probably not far the same cost now. So yes, that's it. As he uh, moves the, but are, the, are they just like the indicators are they I'm presuming? Yeah, it gives me something to fire. It gives, gives me something to fire when I can't so, get to a point. So that's just indicators there. So he gets the laser, points it at that. And the machine reads it and maps it on there there we are and you'll just move them round and keep going round and just come obviously complete this it's a bit hard to see because the redox is there there we go sorry mate i'll make your way now i'll make his way now so that's it i'll leave him to it come to get in his way and get annoyed in a minute and uh we'll carry on in a minute okay template man's gone he's happy it's all level it's all square it's all where it should be as per plan so he's uh just left and i've just well, when he was here, actually, realised that the um, last panel for the job, there, which was going there, because obviously the manufactured edge on it at the bottom. Anyone else see that on the screen? Size green, blue. Randomly, this is the last panel I've got to use. Not in any order. It's even got five of five on there look and this wasn't taken out in any particular order i've been moving these panels around since the job since it all got delivered and this is the last one i've got to use that's bad luck isn't it so there we are but we've got over it anyway because we're gonna match this side in terms of the panels going to come down onto the pelmet like that to match that anyway so i'm going to use some of this it is the same panel thickness but it's just not got my manufactured edge on it but what it will do if i just move that to mirror that that will sit and i've got to be careful because that's not fixed yet it'll just sit on top of there 20 mil forward on top of there like that instead so that'll look tidy i've got to move that bit of pelmet in a little bit but so that'll look nice and tidy and the edge all bar the 10 mil at the back won't be seen, unless of course you get your head right in there, all, which you're gonna see anyway. 
So there we are. So I'll get that done. There he's gone. Get this done. And then I can start putting handles on then and getting uh, corners all the way around. Right then, let's get on with something. So I've gone ahead and finished. My apologies for not showing you, but when I discovered that as an, another thing, I was deflated, if I'm honest with you. Um, but as it was, because we've copied the panel going down to it, like that one, I've matched it this side and then put my scribe in, put the panel on, put the scribe into there. Uh, I've then on, gone and put the cornice on all around. I put a blank panel at the back just to blank off the, uh, the bit of a horrible void. And I've uh, cut some pieces into the corner there. You can't really see in this light, can you? Um, just to um, mask that in so you didn't sort of see a horrible bit of white because I've doubled that panel, as you can see, because that panel finished and you could see about sort of 25 mil of corner uh, of the, the wall that you can see up there and it just looked rubbish. So um, I've done that. And then I've brought my cornice across the face of the wall then, so it matches in the corner, just to sort of tie it up a little bit better, rather than finishing it and having, again, a little bit of wall showing. So that's what I've done. Uh, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at um, putting these handles on. I started the draw ones already and drilled them. Then if I showed that, I can't remember, but when I finished a couple of weeks ago, waiting for these to turn up, um, what I did was I pre-drilled these with Michael's... Um, Yes, handle jig, before I dismantle it and give it him back. I don't want it left on site. However, what I've done is, I've been and fetched this lot this morning from Screwfix, just a variety of pan connectors to work out exactly what we're going to do with the toilet. I bought myself one of these, I said advertised, it is handle and knobs on drawers jig from Screwfix. It wasn't expensive. So I thought I'd, it's made by Haffle, Maffle. Haffle, I think, it's made by. So I'll have a look at that. So we'll, I'll set it up. Once I've set it up, I'll give you my opinion on it and tell you if it's worth you guys getting yourself one for the sake of doing one kitchen. I can't see this being a, having much longevity, if I'm honest, but because it's just moulded plastic. Not like mix, which is all sort of knurled metal um, threaded pins and all that business. So we'll have a look at that, shall we? See how we get on. But what in the meantime, I'll put these, um, these on first. But the reason I stopped was because... If you look, unfortunately, I'm left now with cutting all these pins down, all the long pins. You have to cut them yourself. So I've got to get me one mill out, cut all them down before I can carry on. Whereas these ones, just get the screws out the bag and off you go. But horrible again. They're, they're like a brass colour. Do you know what I mean? And that sea silver looks okay. But brass looks a bit rubbish. So, um, yeah, let's get the handles on and then I'll give you a quick shot of it finished with these doors back on because that's for the fridge freezer, oven, and then the um, doodah, who do me flip, what's it? Extractor is going in there. All the handles are on. And I've put the last couple of bits, which is the um, soft clothes, into that cupboard there. And other than tied, pushing that wire away so it looks better when I take a photo. Um, that, I'm going to have a look at the extract now, see how that fits in that cupboard before I put the hand on in case there's some kind of weird, you know, it goes in the middle or a hinge has got to come off. I honestly don't know. It's been a long time since I've put an extract in a cupboard. Long time. So I'll have a look at that now. And the question you're asking in your head now is, how did that jig get on? Um, if I just show you that I've had to double side tape some four mil packers onto there, would that answer your question? Because I've got such a narrow style there. This goes down to 20 mil, so I then have to get four mil packers and stick them on there. Um, and what I will say is, as, suge as suggested earlier, it is just plastic. I think if you were anything more than two or three jobs, you'd start elongating your holes a little bit. Um, it may be that all I do future is get my picker pencil, my fine lead one, and just use it as a reference um, instead rather than using to drill holes because because it's a bit flimsy. You have got the the unfortunate option of moving it quite easy. I mean, just one-handed. Um, that there, look. It slides up and down. You know, so you've only got to catch it, pick it back up again, put it on your cupboard, game over. Because it's got, it's good. It's got like measurements on there, look, if you can't see it on the screen. Um, but obviously you've only got to knock it once and that's it. You're finished, didn't you? So, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you could clamp it and you could, you know, you could stick a bit of 
tape across there just to stop it moving. But it's done the job for this instance. But, you know, whether I use it again, I don't know. We will see. So I am officially all done from my point of view now because there's nothing else I can do at this point. I've showed you everything apart from this, which was all I had to do was cut a hole at the bottom of the cupboard and then it just pushes up under the cupboard like that into a clip. And those clips you can sort of see there, that clip, that silver clip there, you tighten a screw and it pulls that down and tightens this to the cupboard. And then I just cut a hole out up there, push that into there, taped all that on, fix this on. I shall leave that now. We come back to another job next week. But um, what I have done is I have, and it's not connected, but I've got all this in there. Toilet's in all set up ready. Just got to put the pan connector on there because the pan connector wasn't available at screw fix. And then fix the sink because that needs fixing. And that'll get um, metro tiled now, around there, cover that in. That'd be lovely. So there we have it. All the jobs to move on to now. And I'll be on the channel very soon. And Adam will be up and running his own house. So we have videos back on a Wednesday before you know it. Thank you very much for watching.